well, hello, as apparently this is just a way of internet greeting in some circles. Now, if somebody said this to you on the street, you'd probably call the police, right? Now, this is just a perfect example of some of the comments that women and girls get every day online. Now, I know a few of you in the audience who are guys are probably like, oh, here we go, another talk about sexism, misogyny, this isn't relevant to me. Or perhaps you're a woman who's never experienced this. Well, I'm here today to tell you why sexism and misogyny affects everybody, regardless of your gender. Now, as a video games and tech presenter from the UK, uh, I, I have a pretty fantastic job, I have to say. I nerd out about technology. Uh, I basically get paid to play video games. It's the coolest thing ever, right? Apart from one small problem. Yeah, comments like this. Because apparently, having a woman talk about why they like a certain video game brings out a particularly angry section of men that we'd rather avoid. Now, before you think this is going to be some sort of weird, you know, feminist kind of man-hating rant, it really isn't. This is a very small percentage of men. And uh, so much to the point that I created a slide just to make sure that we are abundantly clear <laughs> this isn't all men, OK? Because it's not. It's a very, very small percentage. But this small percentage of men does more damage to intergender relationships than a GPS breaking down mid-holiday journey. The results are literally catastrophic. They fundamentally change how women behave and how we interact with all future men. Now, maybe you're a nice, well-rounded guy, and you approach a girl in a bar, and you say, hey, what's up? I presume that's how you do it. <laughs> and straight away, this woman will just shut you down and doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Well, you've just felt the full force and effect of these other guys' behavior and how it's going to be affecting your life. Because women aren't naturally suspicious and hostile towards men. You know, we've learned to be this way. Because you know what? It's better to just not let it affect us, yeah? Now, I've noticed I've started doing this. And not just in bars. If a guy comes up to me in the street and starts talking to me, I'm like, no, nope, don't want to talk to you. Uh, it's going to be rubbish. No, nope, don't want to talk to you. It's literally changed the way I am as a woman. I'm a really, really chatty person. I, I mean, I chose this job because I love to talk to people. And this has fundamentally changed my behavior and who I am as a person. It's quite a big thing. Now, if I was a man, I would be pretty annoyed with these gentlemen because, and, and you know exactly the ones that I'm talking about. You know, they're the ones on the periphery of your friendship group or, you know, in your office, you kind of make sexist or misogynistic chat or, you know, they objectify women. They kind of think of us like some sort of weird choose your own adventure video game where if they say the right things in the right order, somehow our legs will magically open like some sort of mythical portcullis in a magical castle somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it just uh, it doesn't really go down too well. Uh, and you know them, you've seen them everywhere, and uh, you need to sort of take better notice of this. Now, I want to talk a little bit about um, the, the comments that I get online, obviously the original one that we looked at, the first slide. When this first started happening, I... <laughs> I felt like I needed to stand up and do my part to sort of try and silence these guys. I didn't want them to think that it was acceptable to speak to women in this way. So I got embroiled in some quite lengthy and long arguments online. And I was pretty stressed and actually quite unhappy a lot of the time. So, of course, my friends and the people that I knew hit me with this beautiful quote, which is, of course, don't feed the trolls, right? What are you doing, Julia? Don't talk to these people. Don't engage. So I stopped. I stopped engaging. And don't get me wrong, I was, um, I was much happier. I mean, I was completely and utterly ignorant and avoiding the problem, but I was much, much happier. If not feeding the trolls was actually a viable thing that worked, we'd all be living in some glorious internet utopia by now, full of bronies insta-sharing cat videos that have been pooped out of Nyan Cat's butt, right? <laughs> I mean, I imagine, because that place doesn't exist, yeah? doesn't exist. We're not there yet. The other thing that kind of never really sat right with me was the fact that, as a woman, right, my go-to superpower, yeah, to fight the evil sexism and misogyny, is, uh, is just to be silent. I mean, that's got to be hands down the worst superpower of all time, right? I mean, that's rubbish. You wouldn't read a comic based on that. I mean, maybe Ms. Quiet Girl, right, and Mr. Hides Under the Desk could, like, build a pillow fort and ignore criminals together, right? 
you're not going to get a Netflix series out of that, are you? <laughs> so I had to basically find a way to deal with this because I didn't like this idea of being silent at all. And this is how Misogyny Monday was born. I basically needed a way to stand up, to be counted, to show these guys it wasn't acceptable, but have a little bit of fun with it. I mean, let's turn something quite negative into something positive. So, why don't we go through a few examples? The irony is I can't read this out loud to you, okay? So I said, uh, not sure uh, you could manage that level of multitasking, seeing as you can't turn off caps lock. <laughs> Plus also, just a little note, um, I don't think necessarily good grammar makes you a better lover, but it does show an attention to detail. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, how about this one? Slightly contradictory. Women, ruining life, don't we? <gasps> so I said, uh, surely that just comes down to whether we smoke during pregnancy. <laughs> or um, one of my favorites, which is, um, he's a very polite young man. Uh, could you sit on my face, please? So I said, not sure I could date a guy who couldn't afford chairs. <laughs> we do have some standards. I mean, they're small, but they are standards, right? Now, <laughs> what I've noticed from all of these comments is that it's not, they're not all just trolls in the way that we think of it. There's kind of differing levels of it. So these are just a few of the examples of the misogynistic comments that I've got. And you can tell that they're misogynistic because, you know, they come from a place of hate. They're trying to silence women or undermine your integrity, all of those classic things. Or my favorite one is the one about Julia Hardy just needs good, there's no sex in the knee sports. Kind of disproved your own point there, but whatever. Um, the other ones are um, the general trolls. Now, these guys, all they really want to do is watch the world burn a little bit. And um, so this gentleman here was saying, I would want to die too if I was your father. You're a horrible person. You're ugly and worthless, honey. Just to contextualize, uh, this was actually under a vlog that I did about my father having terminal cancer, which... Uh, <laughs> No, it's fine. I don't actually need any sympathy because you know what? The fact of what he said and where he put it is just so achingly desperate and pathetic. Yeah. I actually kind of just want to give the guy a hug. I mean, you know, if that level of desperation wasn't positively, uh, you know, contagious. And then you have like this general sexism. Now, this is much more prevalent. So this guy is saying, I would pay you $5,000 a day just to, you know, touch your hand. Now, what's important here is if you look underneath, it says, um, I'm, I love you. Right? I, he, this guy likes me. This isn't coming from a place of hate. He just wants to connect with me, but somehow he thinks that this is a fine opening gambit to talk to a woman. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a little bit sensitive, or maybe I should learn to take a compliment. I mean, he said $5,000, right? Yeah? I'm an expensive um, prostitute. What I've learned from all of this is, okay, so the misogynists are one thing, and actually I don't worry too much about them, because you know what, we've all got that kind of weird uncle or that weird old granddad or whatever who's a bit unpolitically correct, and you kind of need to just think of them like that, like, oh, silly old granddad, his mind's in the past, let him get on with it. You know, I just kind of think natural selection will gradually just eke these guys out, so we don't really need to worry about them. What bothers me more is, uh, is the sexist, because it's much more kind of prevalent and it affects women more, purely because, you know, it's everywhere and it's impossible to avoid. So, I know there's some guys out there thinking, Julia, I'm no sexist. Now, okay, Simon, maybe you're not that guy or whatever. Um, I just want to explain to you something that might shift your opinion, which is sexism isn't really a conscious thing right? It comes kind of from societal pre-programming. You don't really know that it's happening. Here's an example. So, okay, Simon, uh, you just said something to me, and it was a little bit sexist. Now, you are Simon, you're thinking, I'm Simon. I'm not that sexist guy. That's not me, right? But Julia seems really sure that that was quite sexist. So, oh, oh she seems a little bit angry. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to run this upstairs, yeah, and just check and make sure it wasn't sexist, right? So, you kind of run it upstairs to your brain, and you're like, brain, did I just do something really sexist? Your brain's like, I'm just going to check. So it goes through the list. <laughs> nope, no sexism here. You're good, Simon. It's fine. Tell her so. So you say to me, oh, it's not sexist. But here's the thing, Simon, right? OK, you check the log. It's not going to be on the log, right? Because it's not a conscious decision, yeah? It's in your subconscious. That's why you don't notice it. The best way of explaining it, really, as a bit of a nerd, is that it's kind of like malware 
you know, you've like picked it up from searching various places online. And uh, it's kind of just infected your brain a little bit and affected your behavior and kind of runs in the background without you really realizing it. I think that's the best analogy that I could come up with. Now, while I'm up here, just want to make one small point, which is there is something that's almost just as bad as the sexism itself in terms of ruining intergender relationships. And that's the fact that as a woman, when you talk about this thing, you're kind of met with disbelief and mistrust. You know, people don't believe you. And I'm not a guy, I've never professed to know what it's like to be a guy, but if a gentleman came up to me and said, Julia, there are these terrible, terrible things about being a man, aren't they awful? I wouldn't naturally just say to them, <laughs> you're being a bit sensitive, you know? Maybe you're imagining it. Because that's not, that's not the right response. The right response is, let's go to the pub and we'll sort this all out. Now, another example would be like, say you had a terrible day in the office. You know, you were persecuted by your boss. It was awful, just an awful, awful day in the office. And you came home to your partner, your friend, whoever it was, and you told them all about this day that you'd had. And their initial reaction was, oh, maybe you're imagining it. Maybe you're being a bit sensitive. Now, imagine that was said to you. It's kind of, kind of annoying. Um, if you weren't angry or sensitive before, my God, are you angry and sensitive now? As there is no more inflammatory statement to say to someone than, are you being a bit sensitive? Because it has the opposite effect. It just makes people really sensitive. It doesn't help anyone at all. And the problem is, is when, you know, women are constantly disbelieved and these things are said to them, they just, you just stop telling your stories, right? You know, you become silent. And we know that silence doesn't solve anything. I mean, it might get you out of a few kind of weird dinners with your weird neighbors, but eventually you're going to have to leave your house and go to their creepy house for dinner. I mean, you're just delaying the inevitable. And here's the thing, if we don't kind of accept this personal responsibility to take action, all you do is kind of pass the buck to the, another man, another woman. It's kind of, it's a disservice to your own gender to not kind of stand up and, you know, make your voice heard. Now, this is all kind of quite big, I appreciate that. And there's a lot of little things that we can all do to make a difference and take a step in the right direction. And that's just to speak up. So women, you need to keep sharing your stories with people and share them with you know, the men in your life, share them on social media, try to make people understand where you're coming from so that perhaps when they go out into the real world, you know, outside of your home, they can kind of see these things happening in reality. And guys, you know what? You need to speak up as well. But this is more to do with those guys in your social group who are kind of sexist and misogynistic. Because it might not affect your life at that exact moment in time, but it will affect it in the future, and it will certainly affect the women you care about. The other thing that you could do that would be pretty cool would also be if you know, women are talking about these issues is to just maybe assume that they might know what they're talking about, Maybe, you know, or maybe try and put yourself in their shoes. Or, well, at the very least, I mean, just offer them a cup of tea, right? <laughs> Bonus points for biscuits. <laughs> this kind of better sort of relationship between the genders is all within our grasp if we can all just accept our own personal responsibility to make that happen. Just remember, silence never solved anything. Thank you. <laughs>